welcome back to 24 7 moms live we are so glad to be with you this morning i'm trisha novotny and this is i'm steve novotny and it's great to be a part of 24 7 moms today i know isn't it <laughs> how many how many years is 24 7 moms been? so we started in let me think I believe we started in January of 2008 officially with a blog. Okay. Like we, oops, okay. Sorry, with our blog on, on what is it called? Blogspot. We started with a blog. 247moms.blogspot.com. I remember that. Mm, I actually think you can still find it. I have a feeling you can still find it. I bet you because can. Because I think my, I had a personal blog there as well. And I think it's still sitting there as well. So you can read like really old stuff and really crazy way we started, right? That was like, uh, they call, they always say you're an OG, right? Like you've been around for a really long time. I'm original. What's OG mean? Like original blogger. Oh, uh, yeah. OG. When I was at the PodFest, people kept saying that to me because we started out with a live webcast, which was back when, I'm not even sure there were podcasts yet. Right. Do you think there were podcasts yet? I'm not even sure there were podcasts. No, I could be wrong. There wasn't. There wasn't. And so we had this live webcast meant which meant just like we're doing right now, there was no such thing as live streaming on Facebook. And Facebook was hardly around as well. It mm-hmm. had just started. Twitter took off right about then. Yeah. As well. It's kind of crazy when you look back. So that's eleven years ago. Is that right? Would that be eleven years ago? Two thousand eight, you said? I believe so. Yeah. I mean Gosh, that's pretty bad when you don't know when you started, right? But I'm pretty sure it was 2008 when we started. Right. Um, it was because Stephen was a senior in high school and he graduated in 2008. So that is about the time that we started. And what's crazy is... Do you want me to start talking about 24 7 Moms? So tell us a story about okay. 24-7 Moms. So we thought, we thought today, you'd like to hear this Yeah, maybe. We would tell the story of 24 7 Moms, Mo- mostly because yesterday we talked about dreams. So if you didn't watch yesterday's episode, you can skip back and you can watch that. All of our episodes are kept on Facebook. And so you can find them at 24-7 Moms. Um, you can also find them on my personal site. Um, but on 24-7 Moms, you'll find all of them. They weren't always... On our on my personal site. So, anyways, you can find them and they're they're numbered episode one, episode two, all the way through. And hopefully, the most of them are titled. We're starting to title them all for you, so you can kind of find them. But yesterday's episode, we talked about dreams and how to make your dreams a reality. But what we didn't share was any of our dreams that became a reality, right? So we thought, hey, we should start sharing our story to inspire you and motivate you that hey, you can do this um, in all kinds of different life circumstances, right? So one of my dreams. And that I felt like God placed in my heart was to start a new mom's organization. I had been involved with mops, mothers of preschoolers. Mm-hmm. I'm still involved with mops. Crazy enough, my kids are now, my youngest are now in high school and I'm still involved in mops. And because I really, 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 really believe in the organization of mops, which is called Mothers of Preschoolers. It's M-O-P-S dot org. And you can find it. And they are local mom groups in your area. And typically they're held in churches. Um, I don't know where else they're held anymore. But they're held in churches. And they're a group that you can go to if you have a child, kindergarten or below. And so I started a mops group in our local church. Steve was a pastor. And we had a women's ministry. And it was great. But I was a mom. And at that time I had three kids. And I just felt like nothing related to me. And I needed something that related to me. Like I loved going to Bible study. But it didn't relate to me at that point as a mom, the topics that they were talking about. And I needed someone to say, you can do this, you can survive this, and you can thrive in it as a mom. And my neighbor, and this kind of kind of helps set up the whole 24 7 moms thing. My neighbor, her little boy would come over and play. And on Mondays, he would always run out the door and say, he's got to go to mops. And I thought, what is mops? So finally one day, my neighbor and I, we had a little business together um, where we sold used clothing. Do you remember when Debbie oh, and I yeah. did that? Oh, Debbie, okay. Um, we used to sell used clothing. Everybody's used clothing. We had a little sale. They would bring us their clothing and we would sell it. And we'd keep part of the profit and they would get part of the profit, right? So we had the consignment shop going on in her garage once a quarter. And it was a great way to make money. But anyways, which shows you a little bit of my entrepreneurship entrepreneurial spirit here so she was telling me about mops and I began reading the manual back then it was in a binder all paper and I'm reading it and I'm like oh my goodness our church needs this we need a mops group I could not get into a mops group I couldn't join a mops group in our community because they were all completely full Ah. so I thought okay can I come to your mops group 
for one year and learn all about it so that I can start one at my church. And that's exactly what I did. So then I started a mops group and our first mops meeting, we had a hundred moms and that was my goal was a hundred moms. So I had a dream to start this mops group, right? And so I did everything I could. I visited every mops group. I spent all summer mm-hmm. in the parks with my kids and dragging flyers around everybody. I inviting remember. Every mom to come to it. I met. You had flyers in every uh, pediatrician's oh, office. Oh yeah. Consignment shop, pediatrician, <clears throat> the YMCA, the libraries, anywhere a mom would go We're with talking door to door sales. People. I. She was on it with stroller in hand. Oh, I was going to have a hundred moms at the first. Why do it unless you're going to have a hundred moms, right? That was my, my opinion. And we could, we could facilitate that in our building. So it went from there to being involved in mops for years. And I loved mops and that was, I thrived in it. I loved it. I grew in it. I learned how to be a leader. I learned how to speak. I mean, just all these things, right? And then my kids were getting older and I had two more babies. So it kept me in mops longer. And I decided, okay, what was more for me? And they had an opportunity for me to be what was called a council coordinator, which meant I helped oversee local groups, kind of in my county, let's just say for all purpose, like in that area. And I would um, run their leadership training. I would meet with them and I would help encourage them, inspire them and give them training, give them ideas and help them move forward in their MOPS groups. Then came open the position of the state coordinator, the area coordinator, which meant I oversaw most of all of Washington, I think maybe a little bit of Oregon, I can't really remember, and all the council coordinators, people that were in that role I was presently in. So I took that role and I began doing that. At this point, I was being invited to speak at Mops International Conference where there's 5,000 moms. And I mean, it was amazing. I was having all these great open doors and opportunities. I was getting opportunities to speak at Mops groups all over. I mean, so many, I couldn't even like facilitate at all. I couldn't do it all. I had five kids. And I had a dream that when my kids were older. What was I going to do? I was going to age myself out of box. With the role I was in, I wasn't going to completely age myself out. I could stay in that role. But as far as attending a mops group, I wasn't going to have that connection with moms anymore, that mop tribe. So I talked to a few friends and we thought, hey, we should start something new. We should start um, a mom group beyond the mops here. So that was kind of always in this little file folder. Literally, I made and I wrote out the dream of what I wanted to do and tucked it away. And one day when I was at my last mops convention I ever attended at this point, um, I was speaking. And when I got done speaking, I walked into a... Um, and I'd always had the name 24 7 Moms in the back of my head. I walked into the convention where they sell things. You know where in, those in the mops place. Yeah, those expo oh yeah, halls. The, yeah, the exhibitors area. Right. So I went into the expo hall, and I don't usually go to the expo. Which is halls. like my fa- that's my favorite I place. Know, but they're just selling you a bunch of stuff that's high priced, and I don't want to buy it. But anyways, I'm wandering around, and I stopped at a jewelry one, a jewelry little like booth, and I looked down, and there was charms, and I love charms, and there was a charm, and it said twenty four seven. Okay, now you talk about getting a weird sign. I went, huh. Picked up the charm, paid my $10, walked back to my room, and had it out with God. And was like, no, I am right in the height of of what I'm doing. I'm thriving. I'm in my sweet spot. I'm Whatever you want to call it, I felt like I was right there. I'd arrived, if you want to say that, and loving every minute of what I was doing. It got me out of bed every morning. It encouraged me in my mothering. It was just everything about it I loved. And it was like, it was my time was up. It was done. Wow. And I, I kind of remember home. that. I I remember I don't remember the charm, but yeah. I didn't remember you kind of went in and had it out with God. Yep. And then I came home and I wrote my letter of resignation that I wouldn't be returning the following year. I lived out my contract or my commitment, I guess, Your for term. the year, my term. And I said I wasn't coming back the next year and that I was going to start this new organization called 24-7 Moms. And I was going to start for moms beyond the preschool years. I was in no way going to compete with mops or take moms from mops. My goal was to have a place for them to graduate into, right? That when they left, their leaders could say, here's another organization you can now be a part of. Which was a real need you were seeing. Oh, absolutely. People loved mops, but when their kids became kindergartners, they're like, out. Yeah. And I'm going to be really honest with you. Steve's, one of his really good friends at the time was the brand for for mops um he was the one that was coming up with their new logo their new colors their new future and all that and i asked him about it and he said there was no plans for mops to move into 
um, an uh, older group of moms. So I thought, bingo, Until I'm going to do this. Until 24-7 moms started coming And so in. what happened is they were going to move into this leadership, more leadership for women, which was great. It was super needed because moms that got involved in mops and became leaders in mops suddenly got this taste for leadership and were being trained in leadership. But then, again, what was beyond the mops years, right? So they were going to do more leadership training stuff and mm -hmm. this whole other thing. Plus, <laughs> the president was moving out into that and they were getting a new president. So any Anyways, all that to say, it was time. It was time to do it. So I, you know, started talking to people and decided, you know what? The best way to kick this off is to do a conference. So we were going to do a mom conference. And I gathered some of my girlfriends together and shared my dream and hoped that they would buy into my dream. And they did. And so we began working on a conference and we were so excited about it. And we held this conference. We invited speakers in. We had workshops. We literally got C's candy to um, sponsor it and provide all this chocolate. And we had back when... Did you have like a candy buffet Oh, yeah, we something? had a candy buffet before candy buffets were real. I and remember we created that. this whole candy <clears throat> buffet. I mean, I had some really great support behind me in these other friends and moms that got behind me. And they went out there and he, they hit the street. They went to Seize Candy. They went to all the local like food vendors. We even did a like Oprah's favorites. We did a mom's favorite show. So one of the sessions was mom's favorites. And literally, these moms went home with... Clothes, jewelry, food, I mean, laundry detergent. I mean, they went home with so much stuff. We had companies sending us hundreds and hundreds of That was of a items. hassle. That was a lot of stuff. It was a lot of work because we hauled all the to the local hotel. Anyways, we did this overnight weekend retreat thing for moms at conference. It was phenomenal. It was, it was great. It was so much fun. And then it was over. And during that conference, we asked moms, hey, we're starting 24-7 moms. We're going to start local groups. We, we will give you the training. We will give you the material. We have this big dream. Do you want to join this dream? And I would say about 60 to 70% of the moms that day fill, during that conference filled out the form and sure. said, I'm in. I want to help start a group. Now, mind you, we also advertised Mops there. I handed out all the Mops little magazine at the time. There was a physical magazine that came in the mail to Mops to moms, and so we gave those out to all them yep. to encourage them to stay part of Mops. We invited all the Mops leaders to come to the conference. Anyways, all that to say, we had this great conference. We had people interested. They wanted to start local groups. That was our goal, right? That was the dream. And I'm saying this because we talked about yesterday how dreams can change too. Well, that was Friday, Saturday, Sunday. About. Um, Monday or Tuesday, a couple days later after the conference is over and you're kind of having that debrief and oh, you're just kind of get, trying to get life back together at home, I get an email. Hey, we want to talk to you. We want to start... Who's Mo hey? Me. No, but who? who? Oh, Mops. Somebody okay. from Mops International. Okay. Somebody from Mops International contacts me and says, hey, we want to talk to you. We want to know how to reach today's moms beyond the preschool years and we want you to tell us. The reason why was my um, topic that I always spoke on at MOPS was at the MOPS Convention for Leaders was how to reach today's moms. Do you remember when I had oh, that yeah. whole thing and Rick and Lowe helped me put together the whole PowerPoint thing mm -hmm. and the music and we had skits and everything to go with it. So my, and I loved it. I would research and research how do, how do you reach moms? How do you market moms? How do we engage moms out in the community back into our MOPS groups? How do we get them there? So it really was a passion of mine of how to reach moms and get them into your MOPS groups. So they figured I must know how to do it for the school age moms. And I'm like, why do you want to know that? Like, well, I'm confused. Like, you know, I'm going to do this. What are you doing? Anyways, guess what they started? A program for moms beyond the uh, MOPS here. So it was the MOPS Next, the MOMS Next program. And away they went with it. I don't know that it's really taken off like fire like MOPS. I don't know if they... It's been... Did you ever know a local chapter that... Yeah, um, actually the MOPS group I'm involved with, if you go online, it says they have one and they don't. They had uh, one for about a year, maybe two years, and it just... It never took off. It didn't ever take off. And I think part of it is, you know, you can do one thing, you can do it really well, and that's who you are, and that's what mm -hmm. you're known for. I think it's hard to adjust into that yeah, and add. Yeah. So I'm for whatever reason, it. I mean, they are out there. I'm not knocking it. They're out there and they're great and again I'm a huge supporter of mops it's just hard for them to keep the main thing the yeah. main thing when that's not the main mm -hmm. thing I mean my biggest dream would be to be back in missions in another country and start mops groups that's like one of my biggest dreams but anyways back to 24 7 moms so oh no they're doing it why would I be doing it they got all the names of every church that already has a mops group. They know all the leaders that are mops groups. They can move right into that. They got all the training. They just have to adjust a little bit. Like, 
why would I even attempt this, right? It made no sense. So I was a little discouraged in my dream, right? Like thinking, okay, God, you gave me this dream and I don't see how I can even do it now. Like, why would I even do it? I might as well just get on board with them or, but it was my dream, right? And again, when it's your dream, nobody is more passionate about your dream than you. And I was so passionate about 24 seven moms. I remember that day when that happened because it just kind of like, tears. it just leveled you. Mm-hmm. It's like you thought, how am I going to compete with this 500 yeah. pound gorilla? Oh, yeah. And, I, and again, we don't compete in the kingdom, right? So it was nothing about trying to be better than them. I felt like I had this um, idea from God to help moms beyond those preschool years. And I felt like it was ripped from me. And so I had to re- go back to God and go, where am I going with this? Because I've got a website or a kind of a blog, not really a website yet. I have a Facebook page. I and mean, we had different things and we had some momentum, but they really had momentum, right? Not that. They had the staff. I didn't even have any Full marketing team. Right. I didn't even have a paid employee. I didn't, wasn't even making a dime and I wasn't trying to make money from it. I mean, I didn't have anything. Everything I did was blood, sweat, and tears, right? And my husband's pocketbook. So <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, we lost money at the first conference. So... So all of a sudden, a few, uh, that was October. And by December, I was still like swimming, trying to figure out what I was going to do, still trying to blog, you know, trying to figure out what does this look like? Where am I moving forward? My dream feels devastated, feels dead, right? So I think it was the morning after, it was like New Year's morning. What do you call that? The first day of the year, right? Mm -hmm. New Year's Day. New Year's Day. Sorry, that's what it's called. New Year's Day. I was sitting in my office and I really, I remember exactly where I was sitting and everything. And I was on the computer and I was on Twitter, which was new. But at that time, literally, if you typed in the word moms, I came up first. And so I was on way Twitter. Way back in the day. Way back in the day. So this is now 2009. This mm-hmm. is January 1st, 2009. And all of a sudden this guy, do you, what's his name? Hurry. Peter Shankman. Peter Shankman. I'm following Peter Shankman. I don't even know why, except for my husband probably told me to follow him because I don't even know why I would find him. He owned a. He's a big speaker in, in the. He used to a whole used to own a company called Haro. Help right. a reporter out. Help a reporter out. Which was a way of connecting reporters and. Um, reporters to magazines to the yeah, news to was, anything like I can go on there and find a, somebody to be on my a podcast if I wanted a guest or whatever right so he was this big speaker and he was on and, and because he had a big influence right that was when the, the word influence was really starting to kind of get out there people sent him stuff all the time products right because they wanted him to talk about their products in his horror thing and he would they would sponsor it by sending him stuff, right? So suddenly his apartment's full of all this stuff and he decides he's going to get rid of it yeah. on New Year's Day uh-huh. by asking trivia questions on Twitter. Crazy. So I'm on there and I'm answering his Twitter questions and he's talking to me. I'm like, oh, this is so crazy. Next thing I know, it says, click this link and you can watch me as I live stream. What? Live stream? What is that? Click. Oh my goodness. Now I'm seeing him just like you're seeing Steve and I. We are seeing him sitting on his couch. You remember this? Messy, garbage, like Taco Bell, a cat jumping across the thing, but he's holding products up. And you're in your office and I'm in my office and I'm yelling to you, Steve, click this button, click this button. You can watch him. He's talking to us while we're watching him. Now this that sounds live. like no big deal, but back then that had not been done once. Not not I that mean, we not, know of. Not, that, not in any kind of public forum. At the right. Time. And so I... Brainstorm, boop, boop, moms, live stream, live show for moms. This could be it. Oh my goodness. Maybe this is the new dream. So I contact him. How did you do that? What equipment did you use? Tell me exactly how you did it. Like, I need to know what program equipment. I need to know everything about this so that my husband can figure it out. (laughs) Because I'm not techie, techie, right? So we figure it out and we decide we're going to go live in April and do an Easter show. And the first show we're going to do was about this time of the year. And we're going to talk about Easter tradition. So I contacted my friend, Nancy, who had been involved in mops with me. I said, Hey, will you come over and do this live stream show with me? We're going to sit on my couch in my family room. Crazy enough. We're going to go live. We're going to advertise it all over the place and tell people to click this button and watch us live. And we're going to talk about these Easter traditions that we all that we do right and so come up with ones you do and the ones I do bring examples of things whatever it is and then we're also your favorite bunny we're gonna do a bunch of giveaways too because I have stuff that companies have started sending me right so we're gonna do giveaways mind you I'm paying to ship the, the stinking giveaway to the mom that wins it anyways we do it 
we like go live for our first show. So from there, I decided we're going to do a live show every week. So from there, 24 seven moms became a live webcast for years. I don't even know how many years we did I it. I think almost five. Yeah. So we did it for quite a few years. And we would have, it was crazy back then because sometimes 5,000 viewers. Oh yeah. We would do live <laughs> Christmas giveaway. So that's when our live giveaway show started for Christmas. Um, we would, where we would do, one time we did a five hour giveaway show. My friend Lori Reno and I sat in front of the camera for five hours going, hey, and then there's this mug and you might like this. And then we gave it away to a mom and we've advanced and all that. By the way, we have a summer, Mama Survive Summer giveaway show coming up May 1st, right here, Facebook Live. Um, all the details will be on our website and I'll keep giving you those details starting next week. Anyways. We started doing these giveaway shows. We started yep. this webcast. <clears throat> we went from Nancy and I co-hosting it to me starting to do it solo with guests on the show. And we would either Skype them in. And we would get everybody from authors like Jen Hatmaker and all the people that wanted to be on the show. Again, and, pre-podcast. Yeah. So it was all it was like a podcast, but, but, visual, but which, visual, which is starting to happen again now. Right. People are doing mm -hmm. podcasts and they're immediately streaming the video part of it to uh, YouTube. Right. So anyways, that's where we began. We began with this live webcast, which then we thought we've got to have a website and more than just a blog. So we've got to have categories so that we can categorize all of our talk, our, all of our, um, sorry, all of our blog posts into like celebrations, recipes, homekeeping, you know, all these different things. So we went through our first design, right, of having it designed. Yeah. Then we would get invited to the local mall to do live shows. Do you remember that? Oh, we would yeah. do these, we'd get up and talk about ideas and do giveaways and and companies, again, would send us all the stuff where we do a mom's favorite show at the mall. And we would give away all these products that companies wanted to get into mom's hands. Because, you know, the influence of a mom is amazing. The word a mom mouth is what I love to say. Is when I like a product, I tell you and you tell your friend. And it just keeps on going. And then that product starts selling, right? Right. And that's been a proven theory amongst marketing to moms. So, anyways, there we go. We have this webcast. And now we have a website. And then one day, we feel like Steve had a golf business, an online golf business. So he was pretty familiar. At this time, he'd stopped being a pastor, start, had a, a tea time, a golf um, web, website where you bought your tea. You go ahead right. And tell. Well, it's a golf. Uh, it was a website. If you, if you wanted to book a tea time online, you would yeah. use my website instead of calling the golf course. Which at the time seemed really radical, but today it's like, whatever, no big deal. <laughs> but it was, and it was such a great service to um It golf helped courses, golf courses because right? they were all hurting because you got to remember this is kind of when the recession was and golf courses were hurting big time. So anything they could do to get an extra player there, they loved it. The good news was <clears throat> Steve worked in our house, so he was in his office, I was in my office, so it was easy for him to assist me and help me in the technical cool things I need done and help me along the way. So then I hired my first employee um, and she still works for me, Shannon. Mm -hmm. She still works for us. Um, we had a lot of volunteers at the time and some of them went off and started their own things. Some of them have stayed with us. Lori Reno has been with me since day one and she's still in charge of our giveaways. Um, I have a, we have a writer that um, writes for us that does right. all of our um, personal content for our products. Um, my daughter works for me. Um, Kari is my assistant. I mean, we have a whole staff now um, that we work with, which helps us to move forward. So anyways, we went from being this live stream show to one day Steve's golf business deciding it was time to sell it. And, you know, Comcast came around asking to buy it. Well, what do you do then? What? You, you sell, right? So we sold and then we were in our car and we were driving to our cabin and we were like, what are we going to do? And missions had always been on my heart. Uh, that was another dream of mine. I wanted to live in Mexico. I've always felt the call to Mexico, um, especially to families there in need and the children. And so we, my parents had been with Youth with a Mission with YWAM. And so we decided we would join YWAM. So we went and did our DTS. We went on staff down in San Diego Baja, which is in Tijuana. And we served there building houses for the poor and took our two youngest kids. At this time, our other kids were in college. They were, our son was getting his master's and our two girls were in their undergrad school. So we had three kids in college and we packed up our little boys who were in elementary school and we hauled off to Mexico and we lived there. So we stopped the live webcast. And really, I kind of, my dream for 24 Seven Moms just kind of went like this. Like it was there, but I had this new focus on missions, right? It, it, it plateaued a little bit because yeah. we, we were really having to take it to 
a, a new level. And I yeah. don't know if we were quite ready for that. Right. And so we took a break, basically. I kept, we kept the blog going. We kept the website going, I guess you should say. The Facebook going, Twitter going. We kept those things moving. I, my employees stayed with me. I actually hired another employee during that time. It's when we hired our writer, one of our writers. And they kept it going. Really, they were running it. They were keeping it going. I was answering the emails and forwarding everything to them. Well, then things changed, and for um, circumstances out of our control, we um, had to leave Mexico. And so we came back to Mexico and put our boys back in... Back to California. Or, I mean, back to Washington. I'm sorry. We came back to Washington and put our boys in high school, which was a great blessing for them because they really wanted to do high school here in the United States. So we found ourselves back here again, and it was like, okay... Where do I go back to, God? What was my original dream with 24-7 Moms? So I started looking at it and just spent about a year, like, really, like, uh, I don't really know what to do with this. It's got this momentum. It's got over 700,000 people on Facebook. I love the community. The community has continued to be supportive of me this entire time. They haven't ditched and left me. And why don't I be more engaged that community that's the community that has supported me that's the community that has engaged with me all these years but at the same time it's because you have been providing great content you have been feeding these moms with ideas and celebrations right. and proven that they work right because, because they were things we did right yeah. so we spent some time thinking about it and I just started listing out ideas and then I had a team meeting. I gathered together all my team, my tech guys, everybody I could into a room. We sat in our office at, actually at Steve's office, which is our office, I guess. I just don't happen to work in that office. We have this big boardroom, like we have a beautiful, like, I don't know, gathering room that has couches and everything in it. And we spent a day in there. We brought in all of our food, lunch, snacks, everything. And we sat at that table and we had a reimagined 24 7 Moms Day. Mm -hmm. We talked about what we should keep, what we should get rid of, how we should move forward, and what the new dream is. And so we have new things coming up. So that's why we are hopefully today, drum roll maybe. You will see a brand new website. Oh, man, I'm nervous. It may go live today. If not, it should go live by tomorrow. I meet with our web guy at 1030 this morning to see how the transition's going because you have to transfer all of your content over to a new site, right? So we'll see how that's going 15, today. 15,000 <gasps> articles. Yeah. And there, it's going to look all new. It's exciting. Um, we're going to have to, we're, it, 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 you know, we'll have some bugs. Yeah. We'll work oh yeah. There'll be bugs. And, and the navigation and, you know, seeing user right. friendliness. The hardest that. part for me is I wanted to ditch all the bad articles. In other words, meaning the ones that were not written so wonderful. I'm not a great editor. I will admit it. So I wanted to ditch a lot of that stuff. And they're like, no, you can't ditch anything. Google doesn't like you to do that. I have to keep everything on that site. The good, the bad, the ugly, whatever well, it is. Well, you have to re go back and re edit right. those. And Take so, out bad stuff. Oh, we can't edit 15,000 articles. They say don't do it. They say just leave it. Oh. So we redirect a lot okay. of them and rewrite those and redirect them. But the good content is all there as well. All the great stuff is still there. But there's going to be lots of new things. And so it's moving forward as we continue to dream this dream. And like I said yesterday, you got to put it out there, right? We, you got to you got to announce it to the world you're going to do it. Now, sometimes it changes, right? Like we announced the world we were going to do 24 some moms groups and that never happened. What happened is we created an online community of moms who didn't have a local group, right? Like right. maybe you don't have a local group or it doesn't work for your schedule to get to that group. We created this online group of moms, this tribe of moms. And that's been our goal the whole time is to reach moms out there and create this online group. So we are over 700,000 strong. We're about 800,000 strong if you count Twitter, Facebook, our website, I mean, all that. We're over 800,000 moms right now. And so that's huge. That's a humongous tribe of moms. And we want to get more personal with you. We want to engage with you more. And so the ways that we're going to do that, that would be checking my flight wrong day. Okay, I'm not going anywhere today. That's next week. Um, we want to do that with some new things. And some of those things are going to be a podcast. Mm -hmm. which we're going to be doing was this live stream right now this morning live stream with Steve and I because I wanted you to get to know this man behind me and and we could talk more about parenting and marriage and we're going to start um mom coaching at like a mom university kind of a thing and oh yeah that's gonna that's be gonna start but that's gonna be a little while, while a little ways off because we have a lot of prep work to do for that so in between that Starting that, we will start with mom challenges, and one will be starting in May. It'll be a seven-day mom challenge, which means for seven days, I'm going to give you information that can help you um, bring sanity back to your life, right? 
to feel like you're, you've got it somewhat under control in your mom world. So we're going to start some of those. We're going to have a lot more free printables on our site. What else are we doing? We're doing courses. Just everything a mom would mm -hmm. need to have the tools yeah. to get your job done in a right. great way and have your kids mm -hmm. love it. So all that <clears throat> to say, it was a dream that I had, right? That I felt like God gave me. And I put it down on paper, and then I began those steps of putting it into place. And what did I need to do? I, you know, what you thought you needed. What? To do. What I thought I needed to do, and then we started moving forward with that plan. And then one day, up came a obstacle in my way, right? But I didn't let it completely stop me. I right. took some breathing time and rethought it and reimagined it. Went back to the drawing board and rediscovered there was a bigger dream. And that dream was bigger. And that dream, I don't think we would have 800,000 moms in 24 some moms local groups. But we have 800,000 moms that have in some way engaged to us online, right? Well, you thought it would be changed. Right. But it turned into something better. Right. But you wouldn't have been able to do that unless you walked through those first steps exactly. and had those first steps of failure. Right. The failure brought mm -hmm. the next dream, Absolutely. which tells you that failures aren't an end of a dream, right? right? They many times are the beginning of a dream. Yeah. That's why you can't see failure as as you not able mm -hmm. to accomplish your task. No, exactly. Yeah. So there you go. That's the story of 24 7 Moms. And I just want to encourage you, dream, ladies, dream. Your dream is never too big. Keep going for it. Keep dreaming. Um, and so we're going to end the show because I think it's time. Am I right? It is. It is. I'm just letting okay. you just share oh, your story. Sorry. So thanks for joining us, and we will be back here tomorrow morning at 7.30. I hope that the story of 24 Some Moms has inspired you in a dream that you have, and that you will step out, and you will go for it. And yeah. you will not let anyone else stop it, because like I keep saying, nobody cares about your dream the way you do. Nobody is more passionate about it, more... Um, concerned about it, more obsessed with it, and more willing to do it than you. So go for it. Yes. Okay. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.